Die bekende omstreden journalist en deestal kelner Jainie Allen is vanavond by ons in die atelier. As jy nog nie weet nie, haar memoir Jainie Confidential het pas verskyn en sy toer al vir wat voel soos hele paar jaar, maar is net een paar daas, sy het net mooi alles ingepak. Sy was in die 80s en 90s een baie bekend as, wel, een baie bekende rubriekskryver en natuurlijk journalist. Daar word vooral gesê, she knows how to turn a phrase. In haar jongste boek is die metafore en die eindes wat ons vang en sy gaan nou begin dier vir ons vinnig te lees van bladsy 55. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having me. I'm sorry I am really, I'm, I'm firing not on all four cylinders. Well, you look like you are. Go for it. Thank you so much. By the time we return to shore, the marlin has changed color. The gleaming creature of opalescent viridian, cerulean and prussian blue has transmogrified into a dull, defeated charcoal. Only the blood on the deck is the original color. Sure. So this is an ending, the first ending that really struck me in your book. Mm -hmm. So Janie, I just wanted to know, if we look at what the metaphor there is, right. it's for it's the marlin hunting in Mauritius, right. and you say that the color changes after this very soon after the 66,000 rand yes, exercise. Exactly. So soon is your as book, it lands on the deck. Yes. Is your book a document about the 80s and 90s and the decadence of South Africa? I think time? so. I think it is a, a verbal portrait, if you like, of that time, very uh, troubled time in this country's history. Mm. Um, not that it seemed to be getting a lot better. Mm. Stop yeah. all this. Yeah. Um, You're welcome, but home, yes, Jamie. But thank you so much. <laughs> and the load shedding, I thought that had something to do with weight loss. Oh. <laughs> but you've never had any weight <laughs> oh on <my> you. God. <laughs> so um, it is a document of that. Yes, time. I hope so. I hope yeah. that. Uh, not that only the man that fell from the horse, not it's much only, broader no, than no, that. No, no, this, I'm not taking yeah. over the narrative of my life. It's yes. getting boring. It's yes. getting really boring now. So that was just one chapter in, in a life of uh, filled as a pomegranate is with pips, with experiences. And a lot of experiences. Mm. I mean, if you read this book and you're in your late thirties, you feel like you really oh, have to hurry up and accomplish much more. Up, exactly, get into <laughs> trouble with the press, annoy them, but speaking get of the, the haters. Yeah, well, I'd hoped all the haters had died off. I'm sure they have, because you've been, you, you well, said I'm, everybody's been so gracious on your tour. They have, they've been wonderful. And I mean, I've had People like Gavin Roger give me magnificent couture garments, which I do not see myself using in the but near future. So I'm going to raffle one of those dresses, Gavin. I if think you, don't you mind. should keep them. I really, really? do. But really? you've never criticized Gavin. No, no, I adore Gavin. Gavin adores me. But has anybody that you've criticized in your book been gracious in the past few days? Um, did I criticize anybody in the book? <laughs> no. No, <laughs> no, surely not. <laughs> Have you heard from anybody that's sort of upset about what you've written no, about them? No, they should be happy, they should be flattered to Why? be in this book mm -hmm. because it's got an index. Everybody's rushing to see, am I in the book? Stan Katz was, he said, oh, gee, I'm really frightened of looking at the book. I said, they're lovely pictures of you. That's all that matters. And they, they are, and we have to talk about the back page mm. of your book as well. I know you've right, mentioned it because right, you look at right. a bakery that says Midas. Yes, and this is the lane that mm -hmm. I walk down every day to go to the restaurant. And it's, it's also very symbolic because the Midas thing that everybody's chasing after. Yeah, and that was mm. a big change in your life? Mm. Huge change. So you adored the high life mm. when you were younger and that's changed? Oh, completely, absolutely. And do you think um, what happened to you was a good thing in retrospect? It's a wonderful thing. It was part of my soul's journey. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know why I elected to do it, but I did and I will be grateful for all this and a great story to tell, right? Yes, of course. But I mean, the commentary that you, 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 you know, sort of giving that time, mm -hmm. let's start with your mother. What right. a wonderful woman, a Twitter force. Thank you, thank yeah. you so much, thank you. And you're not sentimental about her no, at all. No, no, no. Um, I found that it's more tangible. Mm. I mean, she was an antique mm. dealer, for instance, right, talk right. about tangible right, objects. Right. Where right. was her shop? It was close Down to the, the studio. Down the road in Randburg. Where? I can't really remember, but it was certainly in Randburg. And it was here. And yeah. I mean, you grew up in this area. Right. Do you think we, as, as or you, mm. as white English, right. is nostalgic enough about South Africa? Wasn't it the Afrikaners that were so nostalgic now for 20 years? And what about the English? Are they nostalgic? What do they want? I don't think so, but no. I read a lot of nostalgia in your book. <sighs> because I'm old. 
But don't you think it's time I that mean, we I talk about... I mean, I have underwear older than you. <laughs> really? <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's because you, you wear such good underwear that oh, they right. last so long, <laughs> isn't fine. it? <laughs> well, oh, tell me, right. it's talking about good brands, tell mm. me about the fact that you now, now only buy on consignment. And the whole Burberry thing. Because, oh yes, the Burberry thing. I come back here and I think, I, there, I only buy from consignment shops because I think it's recycling. Oh, this is what somebody said about me and this author to her. You're being refamed, you're being re, what's the word, repurposed. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe in recycling things. So I never, I would never go and buy a new something or other. And it's fun to go through consignment shops. And I saw this fabulous bag. I thought I must treat myself for the author tour, the author tour. Yeah. And I bought this bag. It was about a Burberry or as the Americans say, Booberry. Yes. So I buy this Booberry for about $200. I said, I haven't got 800. I'm a pom mom. So they gave it to me for less. I don't think they knew what it was. And I come to Hyde Park, I see 40,000 rands. Mm, mm. Who can afford that? So do you, do you think we're still decadent? Like yes, them? even worse. Even worse. Is that, oh. what surprised you of coming back to the country? I thought I was in Dubai. I couldn't yeah. believe the growth. I think it's very exciting. It's very cutting edge, all those positive things. But I, I must tell you, I'm, I, could, I don't know how I could ever come back here because I couldn't afford the high white walls. But you mentioned in your book, there's a quote that I don't know whether it's the South African mm. or the Joburg or the Afrikaner, mm. I can't remember that, that stands with the one foot in the previous century and oh, the right, other in Walmart. That's, and that kind of reminds of Dubai, doesn't it? Well, yes, yes, probably. Was it the Afrikaner? Or it's Afrikaner. The Afrikaner, mm. so just say that again, previous century? They lived with one foot in the previous century and the other foot in Macy's. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we're all very nostalgic about our history, but we keep yeah. on consuming and not caring consuming about anything. Consuming and not caring. And I think we've become a very callous society. Mm. Really, really callous. The xenophobia thing. I'm not even going there because I'm only interested in handbags. But it, it's, it, to me, it's, it's noticeable from where I came because the little village where I live, about two weeks ago, the manager's car was egged and they called the state troopers. Sure. That's the level of yeah. no crime, nothing, nothing. Yeah. And then I come here and I see the headlines. It's quite scary. Now, there are mm. many callous things that mm. happen in your book in right. that time. And something we, we read, the Marlin um, mm -hmm. incident, but then also the running of the bulls. The running of the bulls. Are there <sighs> metaphors in how we handle animals? Yes, absolutely. Everything. Maybe the book has so many. And I'm so grateful that you actually did notice and clever girl you were clever clogs right <laughs> and I'm, I'm wearing my and you have beautiful <laughs> teeth you've got the american teeth thank you i think that i'm so pleased that you did see a lot of the the stuff that i choose to write it's a metaphor for many other things mm. and the running of the bulls was was akin to the marlin fishing it's the brutality and, and the romanticism romanticizing what is really savage behavior now we very often speak about a plan b in south mm -hmm. africa and we find that sometimes that plan B is just to be more gentle instead of yes, immigrating. Yes. Right, exactly. But what would your advice be as someone that is a waiter in America and right. that has decided to become, mm. sort of to look at life in a simple manner, what would your mm. advice be to South Africans at the moment? Oh my gosh, I wouldn't presume to advise, but I would just say to, uh, to I wouldn't presume to advise to South Africans, but to anybody who likes to believe that they are evolved and civilized and they're wearing Prada, please be gentle with each other, just mm. on a one-on-one -on -one basis. When I first went to America, they used to drive me crazy because they keep saying, have a nice day. But I think when you keep repeating that, mm. maybe it's a good mantra mm. and the energy from that is better than, you know, that sort of thing. Really? Yes, I think so. In the beginning, I got it was so annoyed. But now I think, no, that's a positive mantra. I find it interesting because one of the lines I like most in your book is the yeah. one where you said that um, yoga is like homeopathy, just with, you know, it doesn't work when it's going well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And somebody asked me today at the, at the Nelson 100, I think that was today, they said, are you happy? So I said, I'm happy with a small h. I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. I'm happy. But my, my goal is to just be serene. Serene is fine. But were you overwhelmed by so many people that just accepted and, you know, we, we spoke about it now previously, mm -hmm. but people, people aren't being offended or 
why are they just so happy that you wrote about them in the book, even though it is so honest? <laughs> why do you think they should be offended? Give me an example, which I offended Have someone. you heard of Linda Shaw? I've heard of her, yes. And what is she She say? hasn't written, she hasn't sent flowers. Because I thought mm -hmm. the letter that was published by her in the book mm -hmm. Wasn't that bad? I mean, it seemed like she felt, felt rejected or something. But what I've written, and I would, everybody, please go and buy the book. Go and buy the book and then make up your own mind. Everything I wrote was, was my truth. Um, it was, the book was heavily, heavily, heavily proofed by lawyers. We have had one spot of bother. Mm -hmm. I could probably tell you. Please. Stephen Mulholland. Um, has been writing letters objecting to the fact that I said journalists like to tell the story that he threw a typewriter out of the window. Really? Yes. So I'm asking everybody at my speeches, let me sh see by a show of hands who slept with Eugene Toblanche. And then they all go, ha, 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 ha. And I say, well, there you go. Journalists like to tell that story, just like journalists like to tell the story about Stephen. Throwing I the thought, typewriter. Well, I thought journalists like throwing typewriters from buildings. Yes, they do. Because <laughs> you often it's hear normal that behavior. Story. Yeah. It's normal behavior. So anyway, he's, yeah. he's a cranky pants about it. No, because I, I know mm. everybody's just praising your book and it's it oh feels God. so rookie. But I mean, it's such a sincere <laughs> book and I really Thank like you. the fact that I can read about a time That's in wonderful. such tangible yeah. detail. That is fantastic. Thank you, you know, That's especially great. Johannesburg, because mm. I think... Um, yeah, well, um, Cape Town gets a lot of, you know, glory, right, but right. Johannesburg has such a rich right. history. Absolutely. And now you... you, and, on this and you know what, I've, I forgot about this, I'm interrupting myself. I have to say, I saw this, I remember today for the first time the statue of Gandhi, and I thought, oh my God, that's the same body type as me. Uh, yeah, well, right. yes. Yeah, that's not good. So you're not taking pills anymore, you're back, back on yoga. <laughs> <laughs> no, forget about it. No, no, yoga's good. Jenny, do you still want to be a waiter or what are you going to do now? No, no, no. Nobody wants to be a waiter. It's character building and it's humbling. Um, but Lord, I've, I've learned the lesson now. So let's see what happens. I, I've like to thank everybody right now. So, oh, like Hillary, thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, we, look, we, we, look, we really look forward to thank reading you. what you write. And thank you so much for popping in. Thank and you. I hope you fly back soon because you must be knackered. I, I, yes, I have to say I will. I think I'll have a post-tour hangover. Yeah, but a happy one. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, so thank you Janie. Thank you. Then Janie Allen. Prontheid is net in weer terug.